Hello and welcome to Commissioner's Corner. I'm Commissioner Charlotte Garrido and I'm delighted to be here today. We're going to talk to you a little bit about the unhoused in Kitsap County and I know that in the past we've had a program about homes for all in a prior program. We talked about who is unhoused, um, the homes for all leadership group and who's represented on it, the Kitsap homeless housing plan and building community and that's building community in the physical sense as well as in the social services sense in Kitsap County. Today we're going to uh, spend a little bit more on the review of the 2018 update of the Housing Homelessness Plan, which is now called the Kitsap Homeless Crisis Response and Housing Plan. I'm delighted to welcome guests Kurt Wiest, Sarah Van Cleve, and Victoria Hilt. Kurt Wiest is the Executive Director for the Bremerton Housing Authority. Sarah Van Cleve is the Housing Director for the Bremerton Housing Authority. And Victoria Hilt is a resident and um, very, very active in the community as well. So thank you all for being here today. Mm -hmm. I know that we have quite a bit of, t of items to cover. We're going to talk about the current housing supply and especially affordability in Kitsap, the housing plan goals, progress and especially the innovations that have happened in the 2018 plan be since the 2016 plan was in place, and then some action focus areas. Um, we're going to have to talk fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank you so much for being here. Kurt, um, I'd like to start out about uh, the topic of housing instability, if we could. So if you kind of lay the, sure. the baseline for us, I'd sure appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Any conversation or discussion about uh, affordable housing needs to begin with a with an understanding of what we mean by that term it's very used very loosely in conversations mm -hmm. we read about the lack of affordable housing or we need more affordable housing but what does that mean uh, HUD okay. the Department of Housing and Urban Development defined uh, affordable housing 50 years ago and the definition has stayed uh, the same and it's simply this a household should not pay more than 30 percent of their monthly income for shelter and shelter includes rent or a mortgage or utilities so that's the standard that I use and those in in uh, the housing uh, professions will use when we talk about affordable housing that means simply that an individual is not paying more than 30 percent of their monthly income for those shelter costs what that means is fundamentally uh, whatever your income is uh, the more income you have the more choices that you have in terms of uh, the housing that you, you can choose to live in. And conversely, the fewer financial resources, the less income you have, the less choices that you have. So we, we are in a situation not only in Kitsap County, but in virtually every part of the United States where there is a housing affordability crisis. People are rent burdened, they're mortgage burdened, where they're paying more than that 30% standard for housing. And I can just uh, state the obvious here in Kitsap County specifically. We've seen an increase in, in the cost of rental housing of 50% over the last five years. It's pretty much been a 10% increase every year for the last five years, and that's caused great distress in the housing market. And one of the I can't imagine a 50 percent increase it, in that time. Frame. Yeah, and if you're uh, an owner of rental housing, this, these are good times. And if you're one that, particularly those that have limited financial resources, because there's a scarcity in the supply of rental housing, it's very difficult to find affordable housing. Um, we have found that uh, for those that are out searching for housing, they're they're being squeezed out of this rental market by people that have a higher income. Uh, we are also seeing drivers from King and Snohomish County. People are looking at Kitsap County as a more affordable place to mm -hmm. live. Their dollar will go farther here. And because of a scarcity of available rental housing, uh, people are, that have limited financial means are having to look for other options. And whether so can you give me a dollar amount? What is, sure. you know, what, what are we looking at? Sure, the average rent now in Kitsap County uh, is $1,350 a month. And oh that's, if you're taking all of the available rental housing and the average amount is $1,350, that's 50% more than what it was five years ago. So if I were making minimum wage, you would have an individual 
uh, would have to make $25 an hour to be able to afford the average rental in Kitsap County. And that's working a 40-hour week, 52 weeks a year. The, the wage that is necessary for a household would be a, uh, just a little under $25 an hour to be able to afford that standard average $1,350 monthly rent. And yet we have a minimum wage which many it's, people make. Which is less than half of that. Yes. Right. Right. And one, one really sad indicator, we talk about how the rents have escalated, but um, over the last three years we have seen in Kitsap County an increase of 90 percent in the number of evictions. And it's directly tied to the increase in um, over the average rents in this area. Because wages have not kept up with the increase in housing costs, the, um, the indicator of great distress is the increasing number of evictions. Households simply are not able to afford the rent, and uh, the consequence is either they move or they're forced to move because they simply can't pay that. So that said, um, I'm understanding that people are being evicted and having no place to live. Do we have a range of housing affordability, uh, different price ranges, or is there, what, where is the major? Well, I think in a healthy rental market, you've got a wide range of, uh -huh. of, of um, rental amounts. What we are seeing, because there has not been a, a measurable increase in the supply of rental housing, it, we're seeing increases uh, all across the board. Um, for those that have a very low income, and we're talking about households that have an income that's 30 percent or below of the area median income, and uh, they're nowhere close to being able to have affordable housing and a standard rental here. Um, what's happening, it, it, there's a, a need for a rental assistance programs. We have a program, for example, that called the Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program. We also have rental assistance programs where called public housing. And, and participants in these programs pay 30% of their monthly income as their portion of the rent. And the difference is made up in, a, in the form of a rental subsidy that's paid by the taxpayers. Um, statistically, for every 100 households that have an income that's very low, 30% of the area median income, there are only 12 available. Um, Would you repeat that, yeah. please? Okay. <laughs> so this is mind-boggling. It is. It is staggering. The, and 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 these numbers that I'm throwing out are really not unique for Kitsap County. Mm -hmm. You will find this in every community in the United States. But for those uh, households that have an income that's extremely low, 30% or below the area median income, the number of a deeply affordable subsidized housing, whether it's a Section 8 housing choice voucher or public housing, there are only 12 units for that 100 um, very low income households. And what does that mean? Effectively, we use, we use waiting lists mm -hmm. and people have to wait until there is a subsidy that's available to assist them. How long how does one wait? Typically, uh, in, in this area, somewhere between five and eight years to receive a Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher or to be able to move into a publicly uh, assisted or subsidized rental unit. Needing to wait that many years seems like it would be just hopeless. It is hopeless and it seems almost cruel. When someone comes into um, the Housing Authority's office and, and asks if there is any rental assistance programs and we tell them we do, but unfortunately our waiting list is closed because the backlog is so long. Their need for rental assistance is today. today. It is not seven to, to eight years mm -hmm. from now. And that's a very, very difficult uh, uh, situation for, our, for us to deal with. Uh, so then I would suspect that Bremerton Housing Authority ho units are all full. We're all full and every available housing choice voucher we have is being utilized. Mm -hmm. When a vacancy occurs, when one of these vouchers is turned in, they no longer need it, then we go to a waiting list and, and that waiting list is 
does not move very much. For example, in the Housing Choice Voucher Program, we have about seven to ten turnover a month, and we see very few, very little movement. Um, uh, and the same with our, our our public housing units. Once people are in there, we um, uh, we, we try and, and have a variety of programs to help them become economically self-sufficient, but two-thirds of the families that we assist are either elderly over the age of 62 or under 62 and have a disability. So it's not likely that their economic circumstances are going to improve, although they may. Um, so we really concentrate on, on families that are non-elderly and non-disabled, and we have a variety of of self-sufficiency programs and initiatives that we work with them to increase their job skills, mm -hmm. um, increase education, link them to uh, higher paying jobs. That's great, although I have heard a number of stories of seniors who are without housing mm -hmm. in recent months. Right. Um, I mean, a 92 year old couple just a few weeks ago. It's just, it's just something unimaginable. Mm -hmm. So thank you for um, that dire story, and thanking you two for giving us some of the details. Sarah, you're working um, obviously with the Housing Authority, but you also work with the Continuum of Care. Yeah. And um, there's some hopeful things that you're working on. Right. So um, we just got done revising the um, homeless housing plan that was um, first originated in 2016. And this year the title has changed um, to the Kitsap Crisis Response and Housing um, Plan. And the reason for putting that title in there is because when a person is homeless or unhoused, they are in some kind of form of crisis, okay. whether it's a middle um, income family that has lost a job and has um, used all their resources or it's the homeless person that has had chronic issues that have kept them homeless. And the last time I was on your show, we talked about the homeless housing plan and our goals. And we have a tag, kind of tagline that the whole state of Washington uses, which is to make um, homelessness rare, which means keeping people from becoming homeless before mm -hmm. it happens. Prevention. Prevention, exactly. Um, making it brief. So mm -hmm. in the event that a family or an individual becomes homeless, shortening the number of days that they actually go unhoused. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, making it one time. So once we get them stable, they stay housed. Um, where we've and we've made successes in that and and the large successes in that have been being able to capture information so we can look at what's working and what's not working um, and then we've Im added the goals um, to uh, improve our homeless response system and so you have to think of it in terms of when you have a fire you call the fire department if you are having a medical issue you know you call the EMT so we have a response cr across a uh, crisis response team to deal with um, working with those individuals who um, find themselves homo homeless. So one of the things that the Homeless and Housing Coalition has been working on, and this is a, an organization made up of all the agencies in the area that work with actual clients that are homeless. So we've been spending a lot of time talking about what's called trauma-informed care, mm -hmm. so that when a person is in crisis and receiving supports or services that we are cognizant as a provider of, of what may have happened in their history that got them there in the first place, whether it's domestic violence, um, chemical dependency, criminal background, and um, try to ha work with them kind of with a tender hand so that they don't always feel like I'm just in a different type of crisis now. Now I have this person who um, maybe doesn't have any resources for me at this point, but to just treat them with dignity because they need confidence to get over this hurdle. And again, I'm talking about the person that is seriously chronically homeless and the families mm -hmm. that find themselves in a situation they've never been in, like the family you mentioned, mm -hmm. the couple that, the 92 year old, that was strictly based on a rental increase, you know? They've been housed, by the way. I know. Thank okay, you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, and then, um, but what we really need now is community engagement. We really need the citizens of Kitsap County to come together and 
get the get the education and the understanding of what we're trying to do. We've had residents in our areas say, I don't want to have see homeless on our streets, but I also don't want to have homeless living in my neighborhood, whether it's in a tiny village or a tent encampment. Um, there's a lot of misinformation about who these individuals are. And so um, we just had our meeting yesterday, and that's going to be our next initiative, is to create a focus group with people from the continuum who have the, um, the education and the understanding of the situations that our community is in, and bring in some community members that want to, on a volunteer basis, really address the issues and help us get Get the story out there that's the right story. Because even, I mean, these are our, our citizens too. These are our neighbors. These are our people that shop in our grocery stores. You know, it, it, they're just in a tight spot right now. And as he mentioned, we don't have enough housing um, to house everybody right now. But even if we did have a house for everybody, we still need that extra added layer of support to keep all the balls in the air so that the, the families that have barriers are, are um, they maintain their housing. So. so that's what a community is though, yes. is it's, it's, a, it, it's a large family support it, Absolutely. Network. If I could make just mm -hmm. a, a very brief comment. We, we want to make homelessness uh, easy to understand, but it's a very complicated. Non-threatening and mm -hmm. easy to understand. And, and Oft times when we talk about homelessness, we use a very broad brush stroke. And we talk about homeless as those people that we see on the street corner. Right. When in fact, the vast majority of the people that we're talking about that are struggling with housing instability are not the visible, but it's the, the invisible. It's the people that are working um, at the check stand at the grocery yes. store or, or a friend of a friend's daughter who has now moved in with her family her parents because she could not afford the rent anymore. That is the, that's the housing instability that we're mm -hmm. trying to address. Uh, and I want to talk about that just a little bit. So often um, there's a stereotype of, of what someone who has no home mm -hmm. is. And yet many, many people are known to have jobs mm -hmm. and still go to work every day and have no secure place to sleep at night. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm interested in, in your mentioning the need to get more information out. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm interested in what that information is going to look like and some of the methods that we'll be using. But basically, what are the, the, the kinds of stories or information that we want to tell? Right, exactly. Like, I think... Um we were talking about we it yesterday. Can tell, I should say. Yeah, somebody said, "Well, they should all just get jobs," you know, and and you know that that can work for some, but not for others. And um, like Kurt said, many of the people that we serve have disabilities that keep them from being able to maintain a full-time job. But again, if they get a full-time job, if it's not at twenty-five dollars an hour, we still haven't put them in a situation that they can afford their housing. Um, they think that people don't try or that they're in their circumstance because of poor choices. And that may be the case, but that shouldn't hold you back for the rest of your life that you made a bad choice. You mm -hmm. ha should have new opportunities. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that we're creating new opportunities for people to change their lives. And then one that hits close to home for all of us is we have children that are living in poverty. And how do we... we um, bring those children up in our community and let them know that they have options and that um, that they have choices and that they don't always just have to graduate back into poverty and, and live as an adult in poverty. So, And then you mentioned senior citizens. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when we have these huge rental increases and people are on fixed incomes that don't see the kind of, you know, COLA increase that they get every year. Cost of living. Yeah, mm -hmm. cost of living. Um, you know, then they're, they're on the other end of homelessness. Mm -hmm. So um, we just have to make sure that the response team has responses to all of those issues. Now we, you know, we used to say oh, we're going to end homelessness. And I think that that, when people see that they, or hear that, they think, oh, that's going to be the person that's standing on the side of the road that has the sign. What we mean is that there is a resource for that person on the side of the road that's holding a sign to 
to access housing. They still have choices. Some people choose that that's where they want to live, and, and all we can do is just say the door is always open for you to have resources. But that's what the crisis response team is about. Um, but we have a lot of work to do, yep. but the fact that we are working together and we are saying, okay, hey, this is an issue. Senior citizens, that's an issue. Um, children, that's an issue. People with chemical dependency, that's an issue. Um, Re-entering after being um, incarcerated, huge issue. So we just have to keep um, working it out and finding ways to um, change policies. You know, like I mentioned before we got started today, that BHA has really looked at their policies to invite people into their housing, not ask people to leave. And I and I think other agencies in the um, community are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. How can they serve their clients in the best way possible that invites them in to receive services, not make services unavailable to them? So. Thank you. Great answers. I'm interested in how many folks who are able to be housed at Bremerton Housing Authority might otherwise have no other option. We actually um, send out a form every once in a while just to capture information from our residents. What, what does affordable housing mean to you and what mm -hmm. would you do if you didn't have it? And we probably have 300 pages that say I would be homeless, I would be living in my car. Some say really sad things like I would probably be dead by now because, <gasps> well, because think about the person that yes. is, has a medical condition where maybe their medication needs to be refrigerated mm -hmm. and they're living in their car. So, um, yeah, they, many people, and the one that touches my heart the most is that, you know, they can um, work, but they also can be there for their kids, you mm -hmm. know. I can work my job, and well, my kids are at school, but I get to be home, and I don't have to work okay. two jobs to mm -hmm. cover my rent. So, they all say that. Well, I, I you know, this is just... And, and I see Victoria nodding her head. Yeah. Did you want to? Did you want to put two cents in here? <laughs> I can. Yes. I mean, they've covered it pretty well. Um, <clears throat> I don't even know where to begin. Uh, homelessness is a an issue that affects everyone at any and can affect anyone at any time. Um, you don't have to be in any social, you know, um, column. Mm -hmm. You don't have to check a certain box, and, and homelessness can affect you. And if I did not have the opportunities that I had when I was homeless, I would be homeless still, or in an unhealthy situation. And I do have housing, and I did have support, and I did have community resources, and I did have community help. Um, and what was the opportunity that you... So I've, I've been blessed with many opportunities. Um, I got connected with Kitsap Community Resources, which is an amazing agency. Um, they have the Housing Solutions Team. They have their early um, childhood programs that help me be a better parent, which is my main goal in life. Um, the combination of those two connect you to many other community resources. There's the YWCA, which helps women and children. Um, and they have support groups there for women, and they're an amazing resource. They connect you with the clothing closet that's in Eastern Bremerton. Um, there's so many community resources, but Kitsap Community Resources specifically gave me the courage to reach out and give back to the community. So now I also have the Bremerton Housing Authority and their community solutions team, and they motivated me to go back to school and help me get started back in that aspect. So now I have Olympic College, that's a resource. That is something that I can not only go and receive services and use the resources, but I can also go there and when I see other individuals who might need a little bit of guidance or education on those community services, I can re redirect them back to Kids Have Community Resources or explain what the Bremerton Housing Authority actually does. Um, all of these things I think are important because in order for a community to have a strong foundation, we have to have people who recognize that families live off of strengths. Um, and without those strengths, it's almost impossible to prosper. But even if they know their strengths, if they don't know how to use those strengths, they're not going to succeed. If they don't understand what resilience is, they're not going to know how, that they can bounce back 
from a setback. If they make one simple mistake, it doesn't have to end their life. It doesn't have to be an example for their children that they can always have to be in that life because of that one mistake. Second generational mistakes seems incredibly unfair for our children, that mm -hmm. they should have to deal with the mistakes of their parents. And everybody makes mistakes. Yeah. Part of growing up is allowing them to trip and fall and then teach them that's what happens when you trip and fall, you bruise your knee. That's a mistake, that's something that they can learn from. But if we create a community where mistakes are frowned on and individuals are kept from resources because they made a mistake, then we are setting this a very, very disastrous example for our future, which is our children. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's important to keep in mind that we have children that are on the streets. We have children that are sleeping on couches at their friend's house. We have families that both parents are working and they still can't make it because they don't make that $25 an hour combined. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really, really important that we remember that anybody can be homeless. A simple mistake should not keep you from the safety and well-being of a home. Mm -hmm. And our future generations need an example of how we should be treating each other in a community and a clear example of what our morals and values are at that community because a community is just an extension of family and if a family can recognize their own strengths and a community can recognize their strengths those are my two cents you're a very wise woman <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Well, we're running short on time. I had hoped that because we had talked about the, the frustration of not having um, enough places for people to be able to live, that we would then move into talking about where are some of the possibilities. Um, it looks like because of our time constraints, we may need to put that off to another discussion. But the tiny house villages mm -hmm. that we're beginning to work on, um, are causing a sense of community within our community of, of the faith-based um, education gr groups, the, the civic groups, um, and many uh, the housing agencies, many, mm -hmm. many more are coming together and talking about how to put the tiny houses together, a very affordable method because um, actually they've been built so far at at no cost um, publicly, the, the individuals and the groups who are doing the work are, um, and other agencies are providing the materials and that are then the volunteer labor is, is building mm -hmm. and uh, we hope to be able to uh, begin housing people in, in these small units uh, fairly soon with um, centralized kitchen and bathroom facilities. I think that's one solution. Mm -hmm. I've seen um, the city of Paulsville has begun to um, enact the idea of boarding houses, uh, something that existed a hundred mm -hmm. years ago very commonly. Um, and I believe there are other solutions. You know, one thing that uh, BHA I'd like to mention very <coughs> briefly, we're really proud of the work that we've done with the redevelopment of the former West Park Public Housing Project uh, and into what it is now, the, the new neighborhood called Bay Vista. We have, because of that 10 year long project, we have increased the supply of deeply affordable housing in Bremerton by 60%. Wow. Through, through that um, master plan development, drawing upon and leveraging lots of different resources, we've created new affordable housing and we've actually increased the number of affordable housing. Yet, we're still behind. <laughs> We, we, and, and, but that's not going to deter us. We want to continue to look at every possible avenue, whether it's uh, looking at um, the tiny houses to all the way up to uh, permanent affordable housing. Mm -hmm. We're always looking for opportunities to increase the supply. I thank you for being here today. Um, such wonderful, wonderful work that's happening in our community, such valuable work that's happening in our community, and beyond the work that we are doing, um, we're all engaged in bigger coalitions of, of things that are good things that are happening in Kitsap. I look forward to, to discussing further, many of these um, items further. I thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for joining us. See you again next time on Commissioner's Corner.